And welcome back, guys, to Deeper Than Most. I'm your host, DJ. And I'm your host, Sav. So, today we are on episode 17. With a Getting new, on up there. Yeah. With another myth mashup. Yes. And this week's myth mashup is Celtic. Uh, and honestly, we low-key... Well, hello, son. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. If you're going to do it, do it all the way. So, anyways, what I was trying to say was, before our son rudely interrupted us, <laughs> was, um, honestly, we should have did this for St. Patrick's Day, but better late than never. So, it was still getting done. It could not have got done. Yeah, but it would have like been cool because yeah, it man. makes sense. But you know, so we're here now. Sure. So, yeah, we're really excited. And disclaimer before we jump into these Celtic deities. So, today's myth mashup is going to be just a tad bit different because, as you guys probably remember, with Norse and Greek mythology, we were able to have origin stories to go along with each deity. But Celtic myth is just not really set up the same yeah absolutely. um and there's really like no stories like not for real for real but i mean i i guess i got a little lucky because the two that i chose kind of had like stories to go along with them but oh really yeah i mean one of mine kind of has yeah yeah it's, it's like, like a short little like brief yeah um story but it's not anything like greek or norse at all yeah no that is like a whole world of its own Celtic, I guess it still is, but it's just not... It's so old that a lot of things related to it are, have just been lost in time, unfortunately. So, yeah. So, because of that, we have extra um, current events today. Yeah. We're doing four of them. So, we're going to go ahead and get into them right here, right now. Oh. And deeper than that. Yeah. <laughs> so, the first one we have, a woman's German shepherd saves a church. So, a New York woman's German shepherd is being hailed as a hero by members of the church after he alerted his owner to a late night fire at the facility. She said, I was awakened by Bear, which is the dog's name. He had an alarming bark. It was very unusual. Lewis, um, I forget her name. I think it was like Mary Lewis. Her name is Mary Lewis, actually. Yeah. Told News 12. I opened the blinds and I saw the church on fire. Lewis immediately called 911 and the firefighters from multiple agencies responded to extinguish the flame rapidly. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Man. I mean, not too surprising, only because dogs have just always been known to be protectors. Yeah. And to be able to alert their humans. So, that's just really cool. It's just another, I don't know, example of how cool they are. Like, yeah. I guess you could really say it's a man's best friend. Like, they are here to protect you. But, in that same breath, so are cats. And cats are underrated. But, they are underrated. Cats can <laughs> save lives as well. So, yeah. don't get it twisted. <laughs> Our second current event is an engagement ring for the books. A man finds a 2.2 carat um, yellow diamond while he was mining. Nice. Yeah. So, he came across this gem while digging for diamonds for his girlfriend's engagement ring. Experts <laughs> say the rock he found is potentially worth thousands of dollars. And the man who discovered this beauty is Christian Leiden, and he's 26 years old, and he's also from Washington, which is where I'm from. So, thought that was kind of cool. Um, it just sounds very Washingtonian to do. It's a very Washingtonian thing. Cool. To be all extra and into nature, a lot of us are. So, he knew from a young age... That he wanted to craft the engagement ring for his future wife one day out of stones he had found himself. So it's like a dream that he's always had. That's um, pretty cool, though. 
And he made it come to life. That's yeah. cool deal. Like, you know, he's just looking for, you know, just out there looking for him. And he just found one. That's exactly. Nice. That's real sweet. Exactly. So, he has been mining around for the past few years to be able to create the ring. So, it wasn't just like a one-stop shop type deal. He's been like doing it for a yeah, while. Yeah, he's been working towards it. But on this trip to Crater of Diamonds State Park in Arkansas, on his third day of mining, he uncovered the diamond. Um, so he was there for a couple of days prior and he was mining those first two days, but he wasn't finding like anything. Um, and so on the third day he thought, well, maybe I'll find like something, a little something, but what he did find was way more than what he expected. Right. Um, he recalls the moment he realized he found the diamond and he said it left him shaking as if he was like in awe like in a state of shock he's like shit i found it this is yeah this is the one and soon after he proposed to his girlfriend of five years and her name is desiree and of course she said yes um and the diamond's really pretty too it's like yellow it's it's like golden looking almost yeah and he already had like a couple of other stones that he Mm -hmm. had like dug up and like to basically put around like a gem that he was gonna buy in a store Mm -hmm. so he was just looking for like a couple more gems to like put around the main diamond but he didn't expect to find the main rock because he was just gonna buy one and buy a band and then put the rocks that he found with it but now he could say that he literally like found the whole ring. That's cool. Like deal. he got that. Like, he dug that up. And that's a cool little heirloom, yeah, I feel that's like. Cool as well. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Current events continued, and this one's pretty interesting. <laughs> AI is all too real. Scientists at Columbia University in New York use deep tech learning to teach a robot to be more like us. Which I'm gonna stop you there. <laughs> that's scary. Scary as fuck. And that's all I gotta say. It's just scary. The robot named Ava was taught to mimic the expressions of people around it, kind of like programmed empathy. Ew. Right? Yeah, Creepy as hell. As fuck. Ava is able to display six different emotions, including anger, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, and surprise. So, why is this necessary? Scientists claim that this technology is needed to build trust between humans and robotic co-workers, as well as caregivers in real-world applications. These include hospitals, schools, and homes. So, I mean, I get the concept, but, like, the fact that it's come to fruition is... That's what I'm saying. So fast. And, like, this is what they're starting off with. Yeah. Like... They already they got, have it in they there. Got emotions <laughs> like that. Yeah, crazy. but like the fact that they already have it in their head. Okay, uh, so we're gonna create this AI. Mm-hmm. Once we create this AI, we want to make it more familial in a sense. We want it to be something that won't alarm humans. But at the same time, they already have it integrated that, like, in their head that they're gonna enforce. Or, I don't even know how to say it. No, they're going to, like, simulate AI into regular life. I mean. Like, in schools, it's hospitals, more, as your co-worker. Like, yeah. you're over here filling in for a robot. Like. Mm-hmm. Well, vice versa. <laughs> or, yeah, maybe robots would be used, like, when people call out of work or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But. It's just crazy. Like, schools, really? Homes, I see that, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, and hospitals, yeah, that makes sense, too. But schools, it's, it's just really, like, and jobs are you going to have around. them, like, teaching kids? Like, I'm so confused. And the fact that they, like, that's their goal is to have them more, like, Integrated. trusted. Yeah. yeah, to have us, like, trust them. Like, that's what throws me in for a loop because, I mean, uh, you're going to, like, trust technology so much. You can barely trust people. So, like, how do I have Exactly. So, the next current event is Luck Strikes Twice. An Idaho man collected a $200,000 jackpot from a scratch-off lottery ticket seven years after a different game earned him a $100,000 prize. Damn. Yeah, she crazy. That dude just sound lucky. It just it's crazy because it's like, damn, it happened. How you win twice? I haven't even won once. In the span of a decade, like in the same decade. Yeah, that is true. 
So Pat Millay of Wiser told Idaho lottery officials that he bought a ride in the win scratch off ticket from the Maverick store in Payette. Payette? Payette? I don't know. <laughs> and scratched it off in his truck. And that's how he found out that he won? Yeah. Wow. I wonder what his reaction like both times was. Like when he won, it was just, was it like, oh shit, I just won. Or was it like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go to the store and <laughs> cash it in. Cause yeah, like what do you do when you win that big? I, I don't think a lot of people like believe it until they actually, you know, I don't think it sets in until they actually go to the store. You got to get it checked, yeah. Store. That makes sense. Just to confirm. Just to be sure, just so you don't. But that's like, cool. That dude's cool, lucky. Cool, cool as fuck, right? Yeah. I wish I could win the fucking lottery. Shit. Me too, but we don't play. We didn't lose to Georgia though. Right. <laughs> we were desperate. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into our Celtic deities. Okay, so the first deity is Danu, aka Anu or Dana. Or I guess it would be Donna? Anu? Danu? Anu? Danu? Danu, Anu, or Who Donna. <laughs> One of the three. So Danu represents the goddess of wisdom and earthly knowledge. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, and I thought this was really cool. It's just things that I'm into. Knowledge and wisdom and earth. earth. <laughs> <laughs> so she is portrayed as a mature woman, and in Irish literature, she well, literature. <laughs> in Irish literature, she is referred to as the mother of all gods, kind of like Athena, right? Is that am I thinking of the right god or goddess, or is that the wrong one? Athena, she's like the mother of all gods. Is she? Greek gods. Athena oh. or what, Persephone? I don't know. Oh, it's not Persephone at all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, she is honored under many different names in Ireland and all the way to West Europe. So, she's widely known. Nice. Yeah, she's that bitch. <laughs> and her background explains that she was called upon when women were breastfeeding and even throughout their pregnancies, which is kind of cool. Kind of like a midwife. Yeah, but like a spiritual one. That's cool. Stuff. Like, that's on another level. A so, holy midwife. Yeah. So, she is also known to represent the wind and fertility. Cute. It is really cool. Um, ten symbols associated with Danu include holy stones, horses, seagulls, fish, amber, gold, the moon, keys, okay. and crowns. Yeah. And, wait. You missing one? Yeah, I am. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Dang! I think, I think it's like the ocean or water or something. Um, and this is because they all have one thing in common, and they all move in free flowing ways. Yeah, we just gonna say it's, it's water. So I believe it's like the ocean or water or something. I think it's yeah, the sea. Um, Dang! You forgot to type it, or did it just delete? Yeah, I think I accidentally deleted it. So, yeah. So, her background continued. She has a strong connection with the land and the sea. She is also the embodiment of bounty, plenty, prosperity, rivers, wells, and inspo. Cool. You know. Which is cool. The embodiment these, of inspiration. And, but like wells, I don't really, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand why. Well, I guess because wells are well. seen to be. <laughs> <laughs> they're seen to be like the womb of the earth. In a sense, who said that? When? What? Well, in I've never heard that. According to Celtic, why? It's because like just because like it's never ending. You don't know how deep it goes. Like I'm confused. I mean, I don't think it's like that. I think it's because of um, I don't even remember exactly why, but yeah, I read it while I was doing my research and I'm like Wells, huh? Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, that's weird. Huh. So, she is the most ancient of all other Celtic deities, um, making her the mother. <laughs> and the root to her name, Dan, or Dawn, in ancient Irish means art, skill, poetry, knowledge, and wisdom. And it's just so cool. It's like all things that I love. <laughs> so, she also had many warrior aspects to her character. And she was known to have traces of the triple goddess within her. So she really just that bitch, like straight so up. <laughs> yeah. 
Lastly, not many stories involving Danu have survived, which oh. is why I don't have one. So, yeah, that sucks though, because I'm pretty sure they'd probably be nice. They'd be cool, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, the next one is Angus or Angus Og. Well, I He's... thought that was OG. <laughs> no, I thought it was just thought straight was up good. Angus OG. And he is known as the youthful god of love. So, basically Celtic Cupid. Um, yeah, I guess we'd say that. I would go with that. Cool. He's depicted as a youthful man with fine physical proportions. And, ooh, he named... <laughs> damn. His name means... <laughs> 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 His name means <laughs> true vigor. Wow. So, <laughs> Warrior. <laughs> Warrior. <laughs> Spelled that shit exactly like it sounds. Warrior. Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and he named me. <laughs> it's not even like he forgot the ass, nigga. He just said. <laughs> How did that even make sense? Typing it, he name. I didn't even give a fuck. I just typed it when I was straight to the next thing. I was like, okay, cool. Okay. From birth, four small birds were always seen hovering over him. The birds were said to represent his kisses and ability to swoon whichever woman he wanted. Definitely gives me Cupid vibes. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's like, cool dude. yeah. So, just a little bit of background and a little bit of a story and some symbols. Angus was born to Dada, the equivalent to Zeus in Celtic myth. So, mm -hmm. he's like the All Father, in a sense. Nice. And bon Boin, the river goddess. Dada casted a spell that caused him to be conceived and born in one day. Which makes him the archetypal youth. Which is <laughs> one day. Yeah. One Damn, so he could like wake up the next day and be like, Well it's not like I was born yesterday. <laughs> oh <laughs> wait I was. <laughs> right. And so just like a, a small story that I found for him, it says one night Angus dreamed of a beautiful girl who he led to his bed. But once she finally got there she disappeared, which left him confused. So he ended up trying to search for her for the better part of a year. He even got sick because he thought he would never find her. And so when he finally found her three years later, um, he transformed into a swan with her and they both flew away with a song so beautiful that everyone who heard it fell asleep for three days. <sighs> That's yeah. romantic. Yeah, as fuck. Wow. That's sad, yeah, but cool. Sad. And Damn. symbols associated with him are swans. And he even has animals associated with him, too, which are a dove and a cat. Like, a dove is like a lovebird, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And a cat. Cats are very affectionate. They are. Interesting. That's cool. Cool as fuck. Angus beef. It's like I'm That's what I thought about when I seen it. <laughs> yeah. It looks like we have reached the time to thank our sponsors. See you soon, guys. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free and it's easy to use. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast straight from your phone or computer, making it the best user experience around. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more, making it so you don't have to upload to each individual platform. And the best thing about it, you can make money straight from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So please, download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. And that's anchor.fm, spelled A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. So what are you doing? Download the free Anchor app now. And we're back like a butt crack. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, the third Celtic deity that we have is, let me get a drum roll for this one, please, because 
Not on the table because it's going to fuck, fuck do it on your side. Because it's going to, um, wait, hold on. Oh. Let me get a drum roll, please. Because this guy right here, he's just really cool. Like, really, really cool. Easy. And I think he's one of the more well-known ones and most popular. So give it up for... <laughs> Sir Nunos, which is... Well, okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah, that's <good> damn shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Nunos, who is the Lord of the Wild Things and the Forest. Oh, cool. Isn't it? Like, it's cool because Celtic deities more so represent, like, actual things. You know? Like, like nature rest aspect. Yeah. And I guess you could say Greek gods and goddesses do too, but, like, with Celtic gods, it's more than that. It's like, yes, it does represent the elements, but they represent other things as well that other myth origins don't. So it's really cool. And he's kind of like one that represents that. But I don't know. Unless there is a god or a goddess out there that represents what he represents, and I just don't know. But I've never heard of a god that would represent this. So... CERN had horns and is widely known for this special characteristic. That's what he's popular for. There's like a lot of clip art or, you know, just art out there about him um, just because he's cool, like the way that he looks. He is also connected specifically to male animals, um, which makes sense because he's kind of like a male animal. <laughs> he's like a buck. And as like Danu, he is linked to fertility. Which is interesting. A guy being linked to fertility. <laughs> it's different. I don't understand how, but he is. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So he is also linked to vegetation. And depictions of Sir Nuno spread from the British Isles all the way to West Europe. So he's widely known as well. He's That's that probably, dude. That also, that also play, probably plays another part of why we don't like have too much on them because like just like uh say polynesian culture there it's so spread out so like all over there's that, so many different yeah, depictions that so you can't yeah, you root can't. it down to one yeah to have like a solid say so of yeah. like okay this is who this is this is this their is story yeah. Yeah, so. yeah he is also or he is often portrayed with a beard and wild hair so, facts continued. He is known as the predator of the forest and the master of hunting, which kind of makes sense, um, just given overall what he represents. But he represents a lot of different shit, just like Danu. Like, she had a whole list of things that she represented. Oh, God. Sorry. For him, it's kind of like the same. So... Also being the god of vegetation and trees, he was called the Green Man. <laughs> um, and this reminds me of like the Green Giant or having a green thumb. You know, when people say, oh, I have a green thumb. It's, mm. it's almost like he is the embodiment of that, of vegetation and growing things and um, crops and just all that cool stuff. Agriculture. So... <laughs> He's going to steal the show. <laughs> so in some adaptations, he can be seen as a god of... In some adaptations, he can be seen as a god of death and one who comforts the dead by singing to them while they're on their way to the spirit world. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that interesting? That like, interesting to calm part. them in a way, you know? like It's like, you know... Because death is a scary thing. But yeah. if I knew that there was something like that in the end, I'd feel a little more at ease. Yeah, like you know? singing to me while I cross over? Cool. Yeah. yeah it, it makes it just seem more graceful and peaceful. Yeah. Um, today, in pagan traditions, he is considered the embodiment of masculine energy. And no, not the toxic kind. Can so be, can be if he's like the god of fertility and singing to people like while they Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, he's the embodiment of masculine energy, which is kind of cool. Um, which it's weird how those two correlate, though. Him yeah. being... The embodiment of masculine energy as well as representing fertility. It's its kind of like a... Kind of ironic. A conundrum, yeah, exactly. So he was able to tame predator and prey to the point where they could comfortably, or comfortably lie together in harmony. And I thought that was really cool too because 
he seems almost like a peacemaker. Like, who the fuck can sit there and have, like, a lion and a lamb laying next to each other? You know, mm-hmm. like, that's crazy. It's almost like he's the god. Well, shit, they are gods, but <laughs> he's, like, the god of animals, in a sense. So... Mystery surrounds him, and his original mythos has been long lost in history, as like most Celtic origin stories, almost nothing about him is written in history, which is why, just like Danu, I don't have a story for him, Um, but he's been, okay, so there's like this thing where, it's not really a story, but there have been multiple witness accounts of people going into the forest in Ireland, (coughs) damn, and, huh? Go on. Oh, um, going to the forest in Ireland and actually, like, coming across a horned man. Oh, cool. Which they relate to Sarnunos. So, yeah. Nice. So, the final guy, well, deity that we have for Celtic is Brigid, or uh. Breed, as it's pronounced sometimes. I don't know why. But this is the triple goddess. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's get into it. Her name means the exalted one or the highly sought, uh, like the highly, I guess you could say, praised one. Oh, really? It's like yeah. the most praised? Mm-hmm. Considered okay. the goddess of poetry, wisdom, blacksmithing, and healing. She's also depicted, well, she's usually depicted as having fiery hair and being very bright like the sun. She was born at sunrise from Dagda, the earth god, or the all god. And Everybody's born from Dagda. Okay, I see yeah. why he's like Zeus. And Boan, the goddess of fertility. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. Why are there so many gods and goddesses yeah. representing fertility? It's a, like, it's, a lot, it's a lot going on. Her symbols in- include arrows, bells, and doorways. And animals that she's usually associated with are owls, cows, and serpents. That's an odd mix. Yeah. What the hell? Okay. Because it's funny because those three animals each mean something different in other, like, mythologies. So it's like... Yeah, yeah. definitely. And they're all just completely different anyways. Yeah. (laughs) So that's weird to throw them all together. Wait. So question because she's the how the th- or triple goddess i know there's like three like adaptations of her or whatever yeah, like it's I'm like three people it. so does each animal represent one part of her um i don't think because why like, would there be three animals and three goddesses mm, yeah one? no i don't think it's like that at all actually based uh, on okay. well, well it was at, just a question <laughs> looking at her looking at her background um when brigitte was born she had flames shooting out from her head and through them, she was united with the cosmos. Yeah. Okay, bitch. <laughs> That's <As> a, cool. <laughs> as a baby, Brigitte drank the mil- milk of a sacred cow that came from the spirit world. So, yeah, I have no clue what's going on over there in the spirit world. That they have. Damn. It's cool. Wait, stuff. so what did it do? Didn't say. It just said <laughs> drink it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little suspicious. So, to kind of explain the triple goddess thing, um, 9th, cen- 9th century Christian monks wrote the Cormax Glossary. And the Cormax Glossary is an old Irish literary work that kind of explains everything, like what different words mean. And it kind of goes into like different stories. For... Like a little background. Yeah. Okay. And it said that Brigitte was the goddess whom poets adored and that she had two sisters, Brigitte the Healer and Brigitte the Smith. This alluded that she was a triple goddess. Two sisters yeah. with the same name, though. So, yeah. so like three sides to her, basically. Yeah. Okay. Or in turn, or I would think of it as like just triplets. <laughs> oh, but they're all named Brigitte. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> huh. Her status as a triple goddess allowed her to have multiple hus- husbands, parents, and children without causing contradictions in the Celtic mythos. <laughs> She was out here getting it. Yeah. And everybody was okay with it. Just fine with it. Like, but if anybody else were to do it, yep. it's a problem. But I mean, that, that's pretty, it's an interesting thing, though, because it's that's like, crazy. what? And she really just got away with it. it <laughs> right? Okay. I mean, I guess. Would you have let her get away with it if you were in charge? I mean, what can you do? Really I look at her as one being. 
yeah, with no, three like, sides, like three that's dimensional. How, that's how I would think about it. But it's so uh, even with um, I think another one they do that. So with I, I feel like with, it would still weird. count the same way. You're still one person, right? <laughs> but okay, right. So this was pretty short, guys. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are already at the end, but you know we always have some ending questions, and we have four of them, just like our current events. Four for four. (gasps) Let me get a vote (laughs) vote. Oh, no, Wendy's. Vote for vote. (laughs) Comment down below. Vote for vote if you're watching this. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, we're going to have our vote for vote right here, and we're going to get into these ending questions. Son, don't do it. Don't you dare. Okay. So, the first ending question is, what is your favorite type of mythos origin? So, Roman, Greek, Chinese, Japanese, Celtic, blah, 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 blah. Which one is your favorite? Hmm. If I had to really pick a favorite, uh, I would say... I would definitely say Japanese because it's the story is so intricate and interesting. Ooh, well then I can't wait to get into those because I didn't know that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, I think for me, <sighs> ooh, I think I'm a basic bitch, and I just love Greek mythology. <laughs> I guess because that's what we've been taught the most, and it's yeah. like so ingrained in us. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I just love Greek mythology. It's my favorite. And I don't know. Like, the stories are pretty wild. It's some messy shit when it comes down to Greek mythology. So, yeah. Look at all this little tongue sticking out. Look at all, babe. (laughs) (laughs) Damn, I was going to pick them up so I could show them. Fuck. (laughs) Question number two. Do you believe the mythical stories have sculpted partial belief systems of today? And, yeah, for sure, definitely have. Because it's like, where do you get your beliefs from, you know? I agree. So they have to, like, read or... Probably not completely all the way. Yeah, no, not all the way. But I definitely think it has influenced a lot of belief systems of today. Um, Just, I don't know, because you could even say that... Well, no, because that's not really, like, a myth. Well, like, that's not mythology. What's that? Like, um, astrology. Like, it's not yeah, no. myth. Yeah. But, you know, it has something to do with, like, the stars and different, like, Gemini and, like, Taurus. And, like, you know, like, different symbols and different names and, like, stories and characteristics of these things where it creates this whole belief system of astrology. You know, kind of like that, but I can't really pinpoint what exactly mythical stories have sculpted in today, like today's belief systems. I mean, I'm sure there's influence when it comes down to like, I don't know, spiritual healing I mean, or, like, or likely, witchcraft, but it's more than likely, like you said, though, it's not just uh, the mythology itself, it's coupled with a bunch of different things like philosophy and like all yeah things. So like i not... think they take from multiple yeah. sources and then come up like scientology yeah. like Oof. yeah <laughs> like that's just like you know taking a whole bunch from different sources and outlets and creating your own thing from that um so yeah i think possibly like some of the myth origins could have sculpted some belief systems of today definitely definitely. when it comes down to having a god or worshiping something like that's what people used to do was worship these greek you know gods and goddesses or norse or whatever so it's kind of the same Mm -hmm. and the third question is what celtic deity do you relate to the most and it can be one that's on here or one that's not um which one do you relate to I relate to Sir Nuno's because yeah. it's, he's just so cool. Yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. I mean, I know I don't represent masculine <laughs> energy, but, you know, everything I could, else I could relate to. I could relate to, um, it's kind of like a mix between Brigitte and uh, Little Angus there. 
they both have qualities that I like and enjoy. So I mean, yeah, I fuck with them. But the whole triple what goddess qualities? thing. Um, as in terms of her like being the goddess of poetry and wisdom. I, yeah. Poetry. Oh yes, then definitely. I guess I could relate to Danu as well because yeah. she represents all that skill, art, yeah. poetry. Knowledge, wisdom, all those things. But Sarnuno's with the wildlife yeah. and nature, and ugh, I just love it. I love, I love the forest. I love nature. I love all that stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I just feel connected with him. And question number four. Why do you think Celtic myth stories are not prominent? I think, like the research shows, it's so old that, I mean, and like you said, like, it's so spread out, too. Like, there's too many renditions of the story for it to make any type of sense, and so there is no story, you know? Um, So, yeah, that's the only thing. The fact that it is that spread out and lost is interesting enough in its own, because, like, what if people were to ever find that stuff you know what i mean what like how what would come out of that you know yeah that's true but i feel like they would have found it by now like it's long gone it's already been so long ago in history it's been lost for a long time but like you know time just keeps moving so for the likelihood of them to find anything now is very slim to none probably not even possible because i feel like they would have been found something you know? Well, there's a lot of things. <laughs> there's a lot of shit that they could have been found. Yeah. A lot of shit that they did find that you didn't think they would ever find. So. That's true. Like, let's talk about the fucking government try- finally, you know, admitting to their knowledge of UFOs. Yeah. You know? And the speculations that they have. Although, of course, they keep saying, I read in the news today, they keep saying that they don't correlate it to aliens specifically, but they also don't not correlate it to aliens. So what the fuck is it? Is it? (laughs) Exactly. What else would it be? But, you know, their strong theory is that it's like some secret special military shit going on somewhere so else but not everything is about the military the military is not like what y'all be making it up to be so <laughs> alien right it aliens, has to be just because what it's else? the military doesn't mean it's human i mean the military has been doing some weird shit for a long exactly. time exactly it's they either were, aliens or time travelers i mean world one war of the two, two they were out here doing experiments and creating super soldiers and they're still trying to create a super soldier Ooh, so we should cover that i mean there's this experiment um soldier that i want to talk about exactly. And yeah, it's really scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and you know, crazy. you have your stuff like MK Ultra, which again feeds into which was the, whole crazy. Super, the super soldier theory because yeah. it's theorized that um, the guy that killed, well, shot at JFK's brother was under, you know, the whole MK Ultra thing, and that's a whole thing. A whole thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um but yeah that is all that we have for you guys today um stay tuned for next week because we have another installment of the fnc series and we're going to be going to where are we going delaware i think it's delaware is it delaware? yes i think next week we're going to delaware um it's gonna be the murder of jane marie pritchett or pritchard yeah. Or Pritchett. Pritchett it, it's in Delaware. We'll be in Delaware next week. Um, Get your tickets now, guys. <laughs> yeah. And also, we did a poll on our Instagram, and we just dropped some new posts on our Instagram as well. Um, and we asked you guys if you guys wanted us to talk about the simulation theory sometime soon. So, we are, and we're really so excited about fun. that. I believe in it. It's so fucking fun. Yeah, it's like one of my favorite theories, and I honestly do believe that this shit is all fake. I think it's a couple of, <laughs> I think our existence is a couple of a lot of things. Like, I think it's like, not only the simulation theory, but also like, the reincarnation and time it's a yeah. lot of different things together parallel I don't think universes it, I don't think it's just all that. one whole thing you know what i mean yeah because in terms of a simulation yeah i mean that might be the case but then you look at reincarnation and that could you know it's plausible too i way. mean but could reincarnation just be uh not a reboot but like a reprogramming of a character or a thing like i mean it could but like the fact that the simulation itself then you get into who did what? So it's like okay. I mean that we wouldn't know, but 
that does not make it not a sim- Okay, yeah, look, we got to say this for the sense. episode. So, <laughs> keep an eye out. Um, We will be dropping the simulation theory sometime soon. We might drop it as its own just regular scheduled episode. Or, I don't know, it depends on how we're feeling. We might just drop it as a special um, extra episode for you guys one week. So, yeah. You might just see it. Just be prepared to see it. Exactly. But it's going to be really fun. So, yeah, keep being active on the socials. Keep showing love. Um, the kitties say hi. Well, one of them does. The other one's sleep. <laughs> but, yeah, so I think that's all we have for you guys. Do you have any kind words today? Um, hmm, any kind words? Don't forget to eat. <laughs> A lot of times we get busy and we just forget to do normal things that we should do. Yeah, so don't forget to eat, get your rest, drink plenty of water, staying hydrated is very important this year because it's getting hotter. Global warming is a thing, so. Yeah, start packing your bags for Mars. (laughs) That new new city sounds kind of promising. I swear, let me find out we're going to New Wasu. Right. Oh, I'm ready. New (laughs) (laughs) I'm so ready. All right, guys. I've been your host, DJ. And I've been your host, Sav. Stay white, stay bright, and stay positive. And I've been your little cat host, Ollie. Oliver. (laughs) Oliver's keeping us company. (laughs) Yes, while being bad. (laughs) Right. Stay light, stay bright, stay positive. This has been Deeper Deeper Than than most. Most.